That intro would get a rock pumped up and in the mood for some thoroughbred racing as we settle in. <laughs> Another Sunday in Miami Gardens, firing away, Ron Nicoletti, <laughs> Jason Blewett uh, to his right, and it's always good to have you with us. Really delighted to have your company as we finish off, just like that, week number three with 10 races. Week number three, 10 yep. races, and uh, beauty, beauty of South Florida, we'll be dealing with a fast main track today. Got some uh, sun yesterday to dry it out. Turf course listed as firm. A Couple of really nice carryovers we'll be talking about in a moment. Yeah, we'll do some housekeeping in just a few moments but let's get you up to speed and up to date with our former fountain of youth winner gunavera one of the best and leading three-year-olds in training this year for trainer antonio sano now this is a look back at gunavera's last race in florida and his last victory august 4th in the tangelo stakes he would go on to finish second in the midsummer derby look back is right they were looking back for competition in this race he just was in hand when he won it edgar zayas in the saddle that afternoon and uh just a really nice horse. So game in the Preakness and every other race. So we'll see how he runs. Yeah, and he's had a full plate of racing. And despite that, I love that the connections have laid back a little bit. He'll have about nine weeks between the Travers, in which he was second at around 30 to 1, and the Breeders' Cup Classic. And this morning, right here at Gulfstream Park West, it was all about Gunnavera stretching his legs. Little California dreaming for the Breeders' <laughs> Cup Classic. He went 5 eighths over the fast main track in a minute flat with Edgar Zayas in the irons. And uh, he's about as likable a horse gun of error. I think he checks without trying, per se, all the appropriate boxes. And he's just been looking great. You know, all uh, these last couple of works, he's just been looking great. He's really filled out. I'm expecting to run. He's going to be a big price, yeah. I believe, in the Breeders' Cup Classic. And I am going to be certainly betting him. It doesn't take a lot to envision him at the very least hitting the board right but who knows if you, the arrogate doesn't like delmar thing and there's a fast pace which there likely will be at a mile and a quarter maybe you get that bold patented late run out of gunavera and edgar zayas who's riding in his first breeders cup classic and that's pretty awesome now moving on to what's on tap today as we get on to the sunday program at gulfstream park west clad in the uh in the goings-ons of uh, Miami Gardens, we've got the uh, dollar rolling super high five and a carryover, Ronnie, of a little over 2,000 bucks and a couple of pick fives on the program. A couple of pick fives. You're going to have a ticket in the first of two pick fives in the afternoon. Beauty of that, as we say all the time, only a 50-cent wager. Yeah, some good prices. Uh, yesterday seemed a little more formful uh, than a non-winning favorite Friday afternoon, and we'll see what's in store on this Sunday card that includes a rainbow six carryover like a tiny acorn continues to grow into a mighty sand pine off the backstretch. I love those trees, and as you can see, a nice breeze, but about 90,000 in Sunday's rainbow six pool that kicks off in the fifth, and then we'll wrap it up with a 50 cent late pick five. That also includes, speaking of some good turf action, our featured ninth race and a really crazy crew of uh, turf sprinters set to go turf sprinters and that is in race number nine of course the first half of the late daily double so really a nice card this afternoon to delve into here at Gulfstream Park West yeah, I think as they say there's a little something for everybody on the program as we turn our attention to the uh, first pick five on the afternoon and happy to have the fast and firm conditions and a rundown as to what's on tap at least as far as my opinions go in this opening pick five now for better or for worse, I am going to anchor this play, and I think it is probably a strategy the majority of people will be doing, and that is standing alone and singling in race number four, the number four, and he's a big drop down in Social Roy. It is worth noting, Ronnie, as I went three by three, two by single by two, we have seen a number of almost too good to look drop downs over the last couple of days, like Leverkusen and Charlie's Secret, not win. Not win, but this is Social Roy, and it's from the Ralph Zadie Bond. He's really good with this move that this horse is making today trains right here at Gulfstream Park West and I think that's a feather in its cap. I really like the cash out. I did not use the number four King Morrow in race five. He is first time made in claiming but I just prefer siding with more high percentage outfits and two horses in a Mr. Papillon and the number three first degree bird who have had far less chances than the 0 for 10 King Morrow. But it all begins Ronnie at around 1.15 p.m. with our opening race. A turfer 
on the card. And I, you know what I say, no matter the day, time of year, the level, just something nice about starting any racing day here in South Florida with a turf race. And we get a crew of $10,000 three and up made in claimers and hands down the most intriguing and interesting last out trip belongs to your top selection. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. He's stretching out around two turns today. He's breaking from the rail again. He had to steady a couple of times. I think we're going to show that performance. Mm -hmm. So a rough race. And I just like this horse uh, with a clean trip this afternoon. Let's hope he pulls a trip far better. Maybe the complete opposite than the one that he got in his turf debut a couple of weeks ago for trainer John Vinson. He was in tight down inside it and even gets worse here. It looks like things may open up, but nope, there is nowhere to slide through between that six horse and the rail. He's got to angle to the outside and ultimately wound up checking in fifth. He does switch to a rider in Luis Castillo who might not be a household name to many, but he's had a terrific meet and I say that thinking that this is a rider who, yeah, doesn't ride a lot of three to five shots, but his confidence is probably as good as it's ever been. And he did an excellent job last year, and you saw that race. Walter Jeep was the winner, just got loose on the lead, and, yep. and I thought the one horse, Hey Bub, gets a clean trip, would have given him a fight for his money in there. So, Hey Bub, on top of my ticket, uh, you know, just off that troubled trip last time out. Now, you did go with the number five, Southern Cal, on top of your ticket. And he comes out of the same race. In fact, Ronnie and I, like two horses, dropping out of that same turf sprint we just looked at on October the ninth as far as an interesting trip hey bub wins that race but the five southern cal looking at the positive approach that was his first start off a near 180 day layoff and i'm just wondering if this race he is who he is after all but if ultimately this race getting a bit more real estate to play with has been the end game well, we'll see how that first race plays out. And they're both two to one co-favorites early on in the way. Very early. I would imagine the four never burned a copy. Who knows if he's favored, but he'll be a short price. And you saw the comment with that early pick five. He is 0 for 20. Maybe he'll make it one for 21. We'll see. Ronnie and I taking small shots against him. As we get on to the main track with Sunday's second race, field of five set to go in this two-year-old Philly $12,500 maiden claimer. Just a hand full of scratches at that on the program today and most of them the majority of which were really nondescript non-factoring scratches we did lose the three power jack and that horse figured to take some play in a very tricky second race even though you and i lo and behold landed on the same horse on top uh maria lena or maria lena who is coming out of a second place finish that we're going to look at back on october 8th a good effort to get her going. She's expected to show more a second trip over the track, which I like. She made that five wide move as you're watching right now to finish second. That was her career debut at this same level and distance. And I had Power Jack right on top of my mm -hmm. ticket. I thought that was the one to beat. Moved in to get Mary Elena, uh, Marie Elena in uh, top of my ticket now. And she tried the winner. She really tried to stick with my niece Luann, who finally, right above the 16th pole, put this daughter of high cotton away. I don't know about, and I'm a little concerned about perhaps the quality of the race we just looked at, even though our filly ran well and you would expect her to step up her game there. There were four firsters in that field of six and only one horse to come back who did not win. And that is a similar situation with the likely favorite, the number two prospective moment, who's coming out of a fairly slow off the turf race and is the likely chalk didn't want her on top. Yeah, she's dropping to the 12-5 level today. She stalked the pace. She weakened to finish fourth, her local debut going. Yeah, it was five on the main track. Jose Pinchin, leading jock at God Desires in the saddle today. Just wanted to touch on the number six, Mrs. McGillicuddy. Who's she named after? I have no idea. That's Ralph Cramden's neighbor. Who? <laughs> Ralph Cramden's neighbor in the honeymoon. I series. know what that's You got to go there. back. And Mrs. McGillicuddy was his downstairs neighbor. The honey what? <laughs> Honeymooners. What? So that is my fun play of the day, and that is the first time starter. I don't know about the sire. I, did, I don't know the trainer, actually. Gino Saccarelli, I believe it's pronounced. But Mrs. McGillicuddy. Ralph Cramden's Well, that neighbor. fits, because I had no <laughs> idea who or what Mrs. McGillicuddy was. I am aware of the honeymooners, folks. A little, just a couple of years before my time. Let's move on to race number three, my good old buddy here, as we get on to this $8,000 three and up two-turn mile claimer in which I prefer, and this is not an easy race. I only went too deep in that pick five, that early pick five ticket. I worry I'm a little light. I do like the five salutation on top, though, by virtue of this horse. 
I think they're just getting. Patrick Biancone is going, this is where he belongs, and that's how I view him, running at the bottom, because his turf races have been okay. He ran okay behind Gaultier, who's a very good horse, oh, and yeah. now he's in the 12-5 optional claimer going a mile across town at Gulfstream Park. But I really like the three in here. Giants Voice, who's turning back to a mile, went up, set the pace throughout, and held on to defeat similar. That was going a mile in his 16th. It was on a course list that is good. I think he's playing catch me if you can at this shorter distance. So that was my reasoning with the three Giants voice, but salutation probably the one to beat. In probably here. the one to beat, depending upon how you feel about the eight Contamar, who had he not had that last out turf race against Giants voice and he was way up the track behind him, he'd probably be a clear favorite if for no other reason the fact that Antonio Sano saw fit even after losing this horse for a little over two months, 70 days later, jump back in and reclaim them. The problem is he took them back for 16 Gs, and this will be the second consecutive race on the turf for 8K. Yeah, so uh, trying to get some of that money back, I guess. I guess so. <laughs> that tells me this horse has just kind of done a steady <laughs> nosedive in the form department. Maybe he's just at the stage of his career where he can still win for eight, but is just a little inconsistent. I do have a bomb. I do want to mention, just in passing, I like the rider change to Jorge Ruiz with the number four, Mad Patriot, who's run okay here and there. I think he's a live runner to take a look at at an astronomical price for maybe the super high or the Superfecta, or even Trifectas in race number three. And that's been happening a lot at Gulfstream Park West. So one of the horses, you know, take another look at, see if you can put him somewhere on your ticket. And his last couple, not that bad, and that is a major rider change, with all due respect, with some of the guys who have been aboard him in his last few. Fourth race, as we get back to the dirt, and this might be the most pivotal leg for everybody in the first pick five today and that concerns a horse we're about to show you a couple of starts back in social social roy as this a five-year-old son of pomeroy and he was one to five in this race running for sixteen thousand off the claim for ralph zadie he never took a deep breath never really had an anxious moment the question becomes ronnie he hasn't run in a little over 13 weeks What's the deal with the drop to 6250? Yeah, he's dropping to the $6,250 level, and you can see how easily he won that race. I want to show you a stat uh, with trainer Ralph Zady. Layoff of 61 to 180 days. Low level claimers on the dirt. He's 5 for 24, 21%. He's in the money 38% of the time, and he still has a positive return of investment. So uh, you're worried about the drop, but this is a bond that puts him where they can win. And I think Social Roy, certainly on paper, is the one to beat. Oh, he's way the horse to beat on paper, and the odds are going to show that. He's likely odds on here with Zayas getting back aboard for a high percentage outfit. It is worth mentioning, and we've seen it, and I picked both and fell for both. Charlie Secret on Friday and Leverkusen yesterday were clear favorites and never really got involved, and both were claimed after taking very precipitous drops. If we don't get the good social roy today, is... Panamax, the number two, the danger. Yeah, and I love the price on Panamax because I think all the money is going to go to Social Roy. He's going to turn it back to five and a half today. Duel for the Lady Weekend to finish fourth. His local debut, that was that two-turn mile. Mike Yates, Louis Castillo in the saddle. Classic turn back move for me, and I think if Social Roy is not up for it, a Panamax or maybe a Bucati on the inside mm -hmm. of the two, that can get the job done. All right, Peter Walder on the rail with the one Bucati, and we get back to jockey Luis Castillo riding well. He's got Hey Bub in in race number one, and he'll come back with Panamax, and we'll try to upset things in race number four. Upsets, perhaps, Ronnie, we'll see. We'll also see who and why and how much you've got on your Rainbow Six. A lot more coming your way. Don't go anywhere. At Express Bet, we celebrate the champions that make horse racing great. That's why we provide more ways to bet from more places than ever. We've built an entire family of brands to give players more of the rewards they deserve give bettors the information they need to win and provide a community for horse bettors. Because the best way to support the champions of horse racing is to champion horse racing. Express Bet. We are racing.
Don't think there were any ghost zappers running or even awesome agains on today's car, but we do have some very nice sires front and center in race number seven, our two-year-old turf maiden race on the car. That is a fun race that includes a pair of runners from trainer Todd Pletcher, but we can't get up and through race seven before talking about race number five, the starting point, Ronnie, of the rainbow. And I went three deep in this race. You'll see my ticket there, and you'll see in race number seven that one horse, Animal Kingston, I love the way this horse ran last time, and I think he's going to run exceptionally well today. That is Todd Pletcher. That is my anchor this afternoon. I've got first-degree burn. Not really quite sure what to do with this horse mm -hmm. here. Mr. Papillon, but the horse that you've got to have on your ticket is the number six ruckus. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Why? Good stat on Ralph Nix doing what this horse is going to be doing today. Really nice carryover starting to build. Yeah, almost 90 Gs in the uh, in the kitty, waiting for you right here in Miami Gardens at Gulfstream West. So the Magic number for Mr. Nicoletti is 4320 as we get on to first degree burn and the cast in this opening leg of Sunday's pick six. A $35 to $25,000 three and up made in claimer at a two turn mile. First degree burn, like many in here, number of chance or changes, I should say, uh, front and center. I mean, really, as far as analyzing and potentially wagering on this race. There's everything going on <laughs> but the kitchen sink with this son of Pioneer the Night. Well, he gets a full complement of changes, as you mentioned. He ships from Bob Baffert it went the West Coast to Jonathan Thomas here. It's $170,000 son of Pioneer Nile. He is now a gelding. He gets the blinkers removed. He goes from dirt to turf, and he drops from special weight to the $35,000 level. Should I go on? Uh, <laughs> no, I, you know, I just didn't know what to do with them, yeah. and he's likely going to be over bet. He is a must-use in any sort of multi-race bet, but for the win in, I, I, I will try to upset him with maybe the second choice. I'm not sure how much they bet on the four King Morrow, whose last two races have been pretty poor, and those preceded a layoff of about two months, and now he's in for 35. I did not take that as a good sign, but I love Gilberto Zerpa, Jesus Rios, the inside post with the one. Mr. Papillon, so a Mrs. McGillicuddy <laughs> and a Mr. Papillon running in this early Well, everybody five. knows who Papillon was, the guy that escaped from the prison in France, right? Yep. Uh, Ruckus, this is the one I want to talk about. Stepping up the competition after returning from a six-month layoff to duel for lead, finished second. That was a 20 maiden going seven and a half furlongs across town. But I want to show you the stat on Ralph Nix. This is second start after a layoff, maiden claimers, on the turf, he's five for 17. That's 29 percent, 71 percent in the money. He's got that dollar 71 return of investment. That stat made me add this horse to my Rainbow Six he, ticket. He's the three-year-old, the homebred by Midnight Loot for Goldmark Farm, and. I uh, certainly thought of Goldmark Farm and even Ralph Nix to an extent looking at Todd Pletcher's other runner in Pony Up in race number seven who lost a tough one narrowly, a couple of necks behind Sutosh for Goldmark and Ralph Nix in that one's debut back in July. Well, with the fifth out, and it's a good race, a real right. interesting race. There's just a ton going on and a number of good barns in the mix as well in race number five, and that's actually the theme of race number six. You've got a half a dozen, Ronnie, as we start the lead pick Five on the dirt with a seven furlong $20,000 claiming race but with this field of six three are coming in off wins three are new acquisitions and I struggle with this race as far as the opening leg of the late pick five in fact I use half the field the uh, number one brave Enrique your top pick three star stone and my top pick the number five illustrious son who's got quite a bit to prove I certainly used your single, your Rainbow Six single, Ronnie, and Animal Kingston in the seventh, but I still want some coverage there with the other Pletcher horse and Pony Up, and I really believe that the number seven horse, Rocky Strange, is going to take to the grass like a duck to water today, <laughs> being by Lonro out of a Danzig Dam. I had no idea what to do in the eighth. Uh, Ronnie and I were talking about that race before the show started. I will just take Efren Loza Jr., wins at a high percentage, likely getting improvement today with C in the test barn, and I hope it's an aptly named horse, C in the test barn. <laughs> I hope he's got the winning tag on him after the eighth as my late pick five single. A solid crew in the ninth, Ronnie, but ultimately, and I went three deep in the last, but successful native and blackjack baby, it feels and looks like 
they're probably going to get the race flow. And in the talent department, I think they're just a little classier. And, and we talked about this earlier, too, and those look like the logical two. I like that. The last race, you know, we're a Texas wrestler, my top pick. But you can go a few ways in that last leg of the Rainbow Six this afternoon. But Texas wrestler wins. It'll be a square price. And Mickey Kroger, she is uh, front and center in the last race today. She has got my top pick, Pioneer Pete and your top pick in Texas, Texas Rustler. As we talk about the crew in race number six today and the uh, sixth race, well, why don't you uh, fill us in on the number two, who's kind of a weird claim in Three Star Stone. You don't really expect at least a real shrewd guy like Peter Walder to jump in and take a horse who previously going into his last was 0 for 18 with a ton of chances. Well, this one moves to that barn, as you mentioned, steps up to face winners. He drew away uh, as the odds on choice to crush a field of $10,000 maidens going to one turn mile. Like, obviously, want to show you sat on Peter Walder. First after the claim with a 50% jump up in claiming price on the dirt. Limited sampling. He's 2 for 8, 25%, but he's in the money 88% of the time with that $1.45 return of investment. So three star stone, I agree with you too. I didn't know really what to do with this horse. Put him on top, but I had to use illustrious son and brave Enrique. I think those are the logical three. Yeah, maybe in this a race. case of uh, not to cut you off. Maybe Peter was just a little bit of ahead of the curve, which is no matter what your skin in the game, right, we're right. always trying to stay ahead of the curve right. because that horse. Maybe the figure tells a different story, mm. but that was hands down the best race. Right. I mean, he was bet like he was going to cruise, and he did just that. Illustrious son, yet another new acquisition in the race. He's going first off the claim for trainer David Fox, and I think they'll probably get back to letting this horse do what he wants to do, and that's kind of a free-running speed type. He just wasn't quick enough. Maybe it was the rider last time out, a combination of both. Did not like, in hindsight, the trip that he pulled, basically trying to sit the pocket and stalk. Yeah, and I just didn't think he liked the off track. You know, I just think you go with a fast main track today. And I hope so, because yeah. he had had an 89 buyer in the slop at right. Gulfstream Park right. in late February, right. and I thought that was the main reason. Right. He was 8-5. to five. Was it the wet track? Was it the trip? Who knows? Can he not run anymore? Will he not be competitive for 20K? It's kind of a pivotal race for the five illustrious son. You've also got Mark Cassie with a uh, Gary Barber horse coming in from the West Coast in the six. Tell me a story. And even the one Brave Enrique is not without a chance. He is faced. You start picking apart some of those 30K claimers he's been running against. Flemish Cap, Fearless Dragon, Charlie the Greek. He's been keeping good form and company. And that was my th thought process in this race to use all three of those on my ticket. All right, let's move on to race number seven. We've got some time, and thankfully we do because we come up nothing wrong with uh, any sort of a maiden turf race, but it, it gets especially interesting and intriguing when you've got a uh, near jam-packed jam -pack capacity filled, uh, filled field of two-year-olds, and we get that today. First and foremost, though, Animal Kingston, your Rainbow Six single, he is the one they've got to get around, and we'll show you the break of his first start. Had an outside post, and you hear it all the time, horses will run to open space. And I think ultimately that is what happened. A slight hop at the start. He drifted out just a bit. And look, all right, if we could just actually, let's roll it. Now let's roll it a little more, boys. That's fine. You, you look where he was going into that first turn to where he is now. If we could just freeze it right here. I mean, he basically, Ronnie, throughout the entire backstretch and second turn run was able in that red cap right over here, was able to get himself up into contention. A very good race. A very good race. And the the horse that run that race, Comey Teen, got a perfect trip, slipped through on the inside and won it. I was really impressed with Animal Kingston for all the reasons you just showed. Spotted the field 10 lengths when he broke up, in the, you know, when he hopped in the air at the start, and he came running really nice. So Animal Kingston, very impressed with that. So I put him on the top of the ticket. And let's add to it. I'll give you a stat with Todd Pletcher. Second career start made in special weight in turf roots. He's 10 for 44, 20. 3%. He's 52% in the money, that $1.30 ROI, because they always bet Todd Pledger. But Animal Kingston's so much for me to like in here. That's why I put him as my single on my Rainbow Six ticket. But you're right about Rocky Strange taking to this turf today. And is Pony up a horse that would fit in that stack, Yeah, I think that's right. I think he would. Right, yeah. as far yeah. as going long, right. because that was just straight up turf, right. Right? right? So you got a good stat for both Animal Kingston and Pony Up. And speaking of Pony Up, uh, this is a homebred for Calumet Farm by Aconite. You don't see his name too often. Aconite, pretty good Horace looking back. He's better. Believe me, I went back and looked at his PPs at his lifetime races. He's better than 
My memory told me, <laughs> believe me. And uh, he's already got a turf winner, a two-year-old turf winner, that is, from only a half a dozen to try. Solid dam. Three of the eight uh, foals so far are winners, including Smavalis, who was a real consistent and real blue-collar, tough dirt sprinter a few years back. And the fact that this horse was right there with Sutosh, I think, bodes well for yeah, him. Yeah, won a couple of Florida Sire Stakes. Uh, so uh, definitely a horse that you got to have on your ticket. I, you know, I backed off. I had a lot of interest in the horse that you have in fourth, and that's the eight Irwin. But Rocky Strange, as you mentioned earlier, who you have on top, certainly bred to love what it's going to be doing today. Just being by Lonro, and we'll break it down, a few more sort of in-depth nuggets as far as the uh, pedigree is concerned and connections and the overall feel off paper with the number seven Rocky Strange. Uh, Lonro, as expected, has been a very prolific two-year-old turf sire. He was just a monstrous group one, multiple group one winner over in Australia a few years back. Now, the dam was 0 for 3 on the turf, but she loved the synth, so that mm -hmm. doesn't worry me. The family has maybe left a little something to be desired, especially when you see Danzig and the kind of quality his name suggests, but there's no reason to think that Rocky Strange won't run big. And keep in mind, this horse was way against, I think, the strongest rail, gold rail, that I saw since coming to Florida back on May 12th when Uncle Runt wired the field and paid about 250 bucks. Let me tell you a little bit about Erwin. This is a horse I think you got to use some weird. Listen, there's a gelding. He's making his first start. I thought it was a promising third turf debut back on July 20th. He broke a step slow. He watched that race. He made a wide move on the back stretch. He's sitting a neck off the page there. Then he faded through the lane to finish six, but he finished six behind Catholic Boy, who won the grade three with anticipation at Saratoga in his next start. I thought this horse gelled in now, and maybe not to win it, to be somewhere on that super ticket. I, I like this horse. I think he's got a shot. This Came out of a good race, for sure. I mean, five of run back on the turf out of that race. Three next out winners, including the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turfbound Catholic boy who's trained by who? Jonathan Thomas. Jonathan. Oh, see, I forget all that. Jonathan see, that's Thomas. why I need him here. I can't remember. That was last week. That was uh, <laughs> that was eons ago. It feels like. I know. <laughs> Let's move on to race number eight. Two-year-old, 12-5, made in claimers, ready to roll here in the opening leg of the final pick three on the program. We don't need to spend, I don't think, a lot of time mm. on this race. You probably, and the horse that I've got second, your top pick, ABG Guerrero. I like this race two back, and that's a race that probably wins this if no one really steps forward. I think he offers more today. He shipped in from across town. He finished a distance third. His local debut at this level and distance. Had a tough time with this race. Also used the eight and the four on my ticket. The one that you have on top, I have in fourth. Yeah, give me a little Efren Loza Jr. Mm. at what, I don't know if you're going to get the 12 to 1 just because of the way this race looks on paper, but such a good trainer who's got tremendous numbers with second time starters featured ninth race a very good one i mean this is a near stakes quality turf sprint race regarding potentially blackjack baby and successful native if not one or two others and they're coming out of the same race closing weekend some eight miles east of us over at Gulfstream Park. Let's show you the green parrot stakes, and both got good rides, and I think in hindsight, Ronnie, and successful natives, the one in the white cap, Blackjack Baby has got the familiar black silks of trainer Steve Claceris. I think in hindsight, though, this was a very pivotal race for the one, or I should say the, uh, yeah, number one successful native. If we could just pause it there, he had landed in a pretty good trip. Here's successful native who sat the pocket and angled out, and then you've got Blackjack Baby in the black cap. They both ran well, but I was happy to see successful Native take a big step forward in his second start off that layoff. Yeah, it was a really extended layoff, and he ended up finishing, as you mentioned, in front of Blackjack Baby in that particular race. I think those are the logical two. Boris, we both have in third Apache Brave. Leaves little doubt as to what his running tactics could be. He's going to the lead. Maybe he steals it, but I think you got the logical two on your ticket. Yeah, I have a hard time, and he's fast, Apache Brave. And Mickey Kroger, again, has two in the nightcap and certainly has a chance with the legit speed and Edgar Zayas with Apache Braid, but you might have to deal with small fortune down on the rail and even the number six horse, Brilliant Interest. As we close things out here, heck of a heck of a ninth race, though, and yeah. ultimately, I think successful Native and Blackjack Baby are here, and everybody else is going to have to really step forward to get up to where they are. Few different rematches. This is about as honest and tough a crew of $8,000 claimers on the grass sprinting that you'll ever see. And in regards to one of those recent rematches, let's backtrack to September 28th. Bonsai Charge, who was the number two on this particular day from the starting gate, the one you want to see, he was off 
a half a beat slow. Little slow as he hopped kind of forward at the start, but he's a closer. I really like the effort after the break by Pioneer Pete, who if we could just freeze it there, guys, you got Pioneer Pete, here he is out there in the white cap, and this is Bonsai Charge, who basically followed him to the finish line. I think those two were the, the logical choice in there, but I went with Texas Rustler in the race. Now, Pioneer Pete, second to who has won this race? You forgot that was the most important part. Swagger was on a two-race win streak at the time, so I thought it was a good performance by both these horses. I went with a little bit of a horse, horse for course play in the nightcap with Texas Rustler, but I got Pioneer Pete on my ticket. Yeah, he was so game, so game in defeat. It was Swagger, got a great ride from Carlos Oliveira. That was the difference, I think, between winning and losing. But you're a fan of Texas Rustler, who's got his own crew of familiar foes like Sum Roar and Polygram. And he's four for eight on this turf course. So that was my uh, reasoning. I said I went with a horse for course play in the ninth cap, and that's Texas Rustler. All right, Mickey Kroger, very busy. Late in the program, Ron and I will be busy with all of you, and it's so good to have you with us as we settle in. We'll look at, well, scratches and changes coming up in just a few seconds from our man in the sky, the one and only Pete Aiello.